Hello everyone and welcome to Flickering Myth. My name is EJ Marino and as part of my Sundance 2021 coverage, I'm talking about the brand new Banana Cuckoo Pants Crazy Nicolas Cage movie called Prisoners of the Ghost Land. If I could save time in a bottle. From the very first frame of this film, I knew I would enjoy it. This is a stunning, bizarre, bonkers, out of this world experience, but there's still something like tangible there. There's still something that makes it an easy viewing. I've seen Nick Cage movies, and I've seen movies by the director Sion Sono that are just completely inaccessible. These weird movies that no one would like. But I think Prisoners of the Ghostland has something that actually just works in it. There's something that makes it just fun to watch. It's a little confusing. It's a little weird. There's a lot of WTF moments, but looking at it, thinking about it, I actually think it's a pretty solid movie. It's actually a little bit more normal than I thought it would be. I was expecting this to go to a complete like 20 out of 10 on the bizarre crazy scale. Maybe I'm just used to some weird ass movies, but I actually thought this was fairly normal for what I was getting into. When our hero named Hero is sent on a mission by the mischievous evil governor to retrieve his niece, we see Nick Cage's character go through a battle to get this girl and also save his own life because he's wearing a black leather suit that has attachments on it that will explode. And we see some of those explosions. They do that very well. So yes, that simple premise, just, uh, you know, Nick Cage's character going on a journey to save a girl, bring her back, it's handled very well. I was truly expecting this to have like layers on top of layers. There's a lot in this movie that they don't really explain. There's a lot of weird little cults and little subcultures that we see, a lot of little groups that we run into that don't have a full explanation, but I'm kind of glad they don't. I'm glad they left it up us to the viewers of being like, okay, I'm just gonna let this go. I'm gonna enjoy this weird Wizard of Oz type of story we're getting into. And I just completely fell for this movie. There's a lot to enjoy. Like I said, the cinematography is stunning. It looks good from the beginning and just doesn't let up. This has some impressive cinematography. I have seen a lot of movies during Sundance weekend, but none felt as big budget, as high class almost. This movie isn't classy, but it's like top tier as this film. It has a polish to it that I enjoy. And then, like I said, the story is just so streamlined. They could have added in a lot of extra BS into this movie. I've seen Sion Sano movies that I'm just like, what are you doing? Like, I love Suicide Club, but that movie has just stuff that I'm like, what, what, what is this story? What are we doing here? So yeah, I was pretty impressed that this movie just went in and out, just decided to tell the story it wanted to tell and didn't waste any time. I appreciate that so much. One of my favorite things about Prisoners of the Ghostland is it's really jam-packed cast. It has some actors I really enjoy. Nick Cage is there and you know me and Nicolas Cage aren't the biggest. We're not on like a uh, that's my favorite actor kind of basis. I usually find his movies kind of insufferable. Even movies like Mandy that I think are well made. I think he's kind of distracting. Here I thought Nick Cage was pretty good. I think he 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 leveled himself out. The movie was going for a little bit crazy so he said you know what I'll match it but I won't exceed it. And that's all I wanted. He was so perfectly matched with the rest of the movie. We also have Sophia Butella who is just doing a really good performance. She's an actress that gets a lot of flack because she's in some weird movies, but I thought she was very good here. My personal favorite is Bill Mosley. You may know him from things like playing Chop Top in Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 or playing uh, the, the the crazy character, God, I cannot think of his name, uh, from the uh, House of Thousand Corpses, The Devil's Rejects. He's in the Fire Five family. Uh, he's really good. Bill Mosley is one of my favorite character actors. When you see him in something, you know he's going to give it his all and he gave it his all here. His governor character is disgusting and weird. It gives me a little maybe John Malkovich at times. It's such a good turn for him. But we also have the actor who plays Yasujiro who is amazing. He's in this Japanese movie I love called Versus and he's playing a good role here. It's not the most meaty of roles but he 
offers up. I think his name is uh, Tak Sakajuki. He is so cool. I'm, I know I'm butchering that name. I'm so sorry. I'm bad with American names, let alone Japanese names. But he really steals the show from me. He's playing this kind of a bound, not bounty hunter, like a bodyguard type of person who has some badass samurai sword fights. He gives me the spray blood that I need. You know, if you like Japanese horror films, especially that spray blood that just goes crazy, he offers me with that with his character. He's just a badass. This movie just has a plethora of characters. You also have those weird side characters. You have this one weird guy named Psycho. You have like the little weird kind of cult gangs that we meet up into. This movie is just jam-packed with colorful characters that offer so much to enjoy. Prisoners of the Ghostland has a very unique world. The writers of this film and director Sion Sono decided to create something very unique, very refreshing. There's things about this movie that reminds me of other movies, maybe a little bit of a blame of the immortal maybe a little bit versus like I mentioned with the actor from it so yeah there's stuff that it reminds me of other movies but there's something very original about it from the set decoration decorations to the costumes to the characters there's something that feels so unique here and I absolutely crave that. I want my movies to feel refreshing. I want them to feel like I've never seen something like that before. That's what this offers. This gives me a different type of story. I've seen like at this moment like 12 movies at Sundance. I'm so happy to have watched this one and it gave me something unique and fresh and something I just I craved this. I've seen dramas, I've seen other horror films, I've seen action movies, but I've never seen anything like this at this event. I am so happy it's here. I'm happy I liked a Nick Cage movie. If anyone knows me, you know I am just hit or miss with him. So to walk away this positive from a, a Cage Sono film that I thought was going to be the most incomprehensible mess, I'm happy that I enjoyed it as much as I did. All right, everyone, that is it for my review of Prisoners of the Ghostland. I had such a good time talking about this movie. I had such a good time watching it, and I hope you all do as well. Whenever this comes out please see this this is going to be one of the Nick Cage movies of the year you know how it goes you get one or two that everyone's buzzing about I think this is going to be it especially when they see how banana cuckoo crazy this can get oh boy all right guys what did you think of this review what do you guys think of this film let me know down in the comments below subscribe to flickering myths we make videos like this every single week and give me a thumbs up if you did enjoy all right everyone let's talk about this crazy movie down below